apologies about that. I just wanted to um, uh, make sure that the, um, the there was uh, we weren't being disturbed by by the phone call. So there we are. And on top of that, um, not only do we have an OPEC meeting today, which is going to uh, impact on the Canadian dollars, uh, the Canadian dollar, which has a close relationship with oil, but also. We had uh, the rate decision from the BOC, which also had a huge impact on the Canadian. And in fact, the Canadian is one of the, uh, is is a currency in one of the pairs that I have a position on in at the moment. And uh, you can see here in front of you, this is our heat map. And we started to talk about this last week and how we can use indicators. And this is not this just doesn't apply to proprietary indicators. It applies to standard indicators, whatever indicators you use on your chart. An indicator gives you the heads up. It it gives you a, 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 a potential signal and it, it highlights something. And it, with the heat map, um, we developed it specifically because we wanted to uh, rank the 28 pairs in such a way that could possibly give us the heads up of when they were at an extreme because reversal trading, uh, buying at the bottom, selling at the top, is it's classic trading. It's a classic trading tactic. And we wanted a, a an indicator that would highlight those pairs that are the strongest or the weakest or the pairs that are simply in some kind of congestion, which is why the heat map is is an indicator that, that we developed. And also we wanted to see it across the different time frames. Uh, this is from the MT5 platform. David has this on Ninja Traders Trader as well. And you can see here, and it just gives us, well, it, the heat map. Um, says it all really and I've been looking at the uh, the pairs at the at the top and at the bottom not so much at the bottom but certainly at the top and as you can see there I've got the New Zealand CAD we've got the dollar CAD we've got New Zealand yen New Zealand Swiss the Aussie CAD and yeah, so and so now the three that you see in purple those are the three uh, pairs that I actually uh, that we, not just me, but David and I, because we worked, we worked together uh, on our trading. That we actually took a, uh, we actually have a position in. Uh, they're going, uh, I think they're going reasonably well, David, at the moment, aren't they? But we will explain why uh, we looked at those, at those three. What happened in particular to the Aussie CAD yesterday? Because as I said, what an indicator does, uh, a chart will give you a potential setup, and that setup can go absolutely swimmingly for you know however long you're going to be in the markets regardless of time frame five minutes 15 minutes this was actually on the hourly chart then the boc came in and bang a huge volatility candle completely reversed um, because i'm in a longer term uh, a trade it didn't it didn't really matter because my stop loss was uh, you know it was way way above but it's just an interesting um example of where you have a potential setup a vpa setup an indicator set up, uh, you know, whatever your criteria is that you're looking at and suddenly, you know, a piece of news hits, hits the wires temporarily, you know, throws it off balance, but um, it looks like it's, uh, it is actually now going back in the, in the same uh, direction. So, and the other pair that I want to talk about is the New Zealand CAD. As you notice, I'm not actually, I've not taken a position in that. And the, there's a very good reason for that. And we'll look at the at my profile for the um, for this particular pair in more detail. What I also want to mention, and I mentioned it last uh, last week, is with MT5 now, which is absolutely great. If you click on a chart, you have there something called docked. If you click that on, it allows you to actually move the chart to another screen, which is great. Uh, we never had this facility before on MT5. I don't know if it's available on MT4, but certainly on MT5 is fantastic. And uh, it just means that uh, you, I can split up the charts from my MT5 profile. So that's the kind of gen uh, general um, um, build up and general background. Um, gone on a little bit longer, but there was a lot that I wanted to cover. If you've got any questions, please just put them in uh, the, the chat box. But I really do want to pass over to David and give him a chance to get a word in edgeways. <clears throat> Thanks, darling. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome. Hopefully, I'm not too loud on the headset. Um, I'm just checking with Anna, just make sure my volume is okay. Uh, oh, she's perfect. Uh, perfect. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, David. There's, apparently, there's no docked uh, option on MT4. 
uh, it's only available on MT5. So um, thank you for that. Um, just a couple of things um, with regard to questions. If you do have any questions, please just drop them in the chat box. Uh, happy to answer them there. If they're short questions, if they're longer ones, then we will answer them on air for you. And the uh, the only other thing I wanted to say was that um, obviously when we talk about oppositions, it's not a uh, we're not suggesting that um, you know this is a trade recommendation. It just so happens that um, you know these are some positions we've actually got in the market just to to illustrate and demonstrate where we got in and why we got in and um, the issues that you have to deal with once you're in the market, which are perhaps the most uh, relevant of all. So let me just pass back to Anna for a moment. I've got the, basically we focus, if this is your first time to this webinar, we focus on two platforms, primarily on MT5, but I have the Ninja Trader running as well. If you're not familiar with MT5, it does have a lot of enhancements that you don't have on MT4. Primarily, one of them certainly is this docking facility, which Anna uses a great deal, which is fantastic. I tend to spend more of my time on NinjaTrader. And the other aspect to the MT5 is also the fact that you have multiple time frames available that you don't, simply don't have on MT4. And you'll find a, a much broader array of time frames. You can have a one, two, three, four, five minute, so on and so forth, 10, uh, 20 minute, um, and it goes right the way through the range, which you just don't have on MT4. And in addition to that, of course, it is a multi-asset platform. As David said, you know, he trades a lot of uh, commodities, related markets. You've got gold. You've got the indices. If you're uh, if you're uh, looking at the index trading, possibly for the future. But in addition to that, and more importantly, when you're trading forex, all these markets give you a heads up as to what is going on in, as Anna said, related markets. It's all about related markets. So if you're trading Forex, it's handy to have the oil up. If you're on the Canadian dollar, you obviously want the US dollar, but you want the Canadian dollar as well. And you want the oil markets going as well. So you've got the oil prices. You've got the indices, which are telling you about market sentiment. There's a whole raft of stuff which gives you all that information, which then becomes the complete picture to trading sentiment, because that's all trading is about. It is trading sentiment. It's trading Money is just trade chasing yield. It's chasing risk. It's chasing return. That's all it's about. It's higher risk, higher return, lower risk, lower return. And it's how that is reflected across the spectrum of these markets that then gives you all the information, the pieces of the puzzle to give you that view on flow, on the sentiment. Is it positive sentiment or is it negative sentiment? You know, what is the broad sentiment view right now reflected through currencies, through indices, through bonds, related markets, whatever it may be. I'm just going to pass back to Anna. We're on the New Zealand CAD there, which was um, uh, certainly one of the one of the pairs we're in at the moment, and an interesting on the hourly charts. I'm just going to pass back to Anna. Hi. Um, yeah, that's one that we're looking to get into. We're not. Uh, we've got a. We've got a. Uh, it's one that's on certainly on the watch list. And if we go back to uh, the um, uh, the, um, the heat map, we can see why it is. Uh, it's been resolutely stuck at uh, the top of the heat map for some considerable time. And you only have to look at the daily chart for the pair. And you, I know, they say this market, you know, is sold. Oh, this is a trend. Look at that. Well, you couldn't see a better trend. <laughs> if you tried, basically, um, you could, the volume profile at, at the bottom is is just fantastic. And when I'm, I'm talking about um, uh, potential signals, potential trading setups, well, if we scroll back to forget when the but which is so far back, this is back to uh, about the twenty, the end of the end of October. Let's you know, okay, you may have missed that uh, uh, this this opportunity, but let's look at where the price actually came back to test the volume point of control at 89.19. Uh, 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 basically, we have this little pullback here. Then it came back to the uh, the volume point of control, and really, you know, what what better illustration of VPA where you have uh, rising prices and you have 
uh, rising volume as well. Then we had a very squished candle here, which is like a little doji candle. There was a lot of effort gone into that candle. Now, normally you would say that, that you would say would be an anomalous candle. But, you know, because of, you know, what I could also see on the heat map, you could that was the point also it was very um it was the number one currency pair on the heat map and looking at that you think mm, that is a a, a a sign of weakness it's an anomalous candle in this move higher if this was going to carry on 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 good volume and and good good range of uh, of price spread you would expect that not to look uh, like that but you know things you always have to remember when you see a potential trading setup based on VPA, based on whatever criteria you uh, you like to uh, use, don't ever assume it's very easy to get carried away and think, oh, great, sign of weakness, fantastic, I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm going to go. It doesn't always happen. You always get this, this overrun. Now, we haven't got any, uh, this particular pair is not a particularly volatile pair, um, which is, which makes it a nice pair to look at on a, on a longer term, uh, on, a, on a base, on a longer term basis. And it's also, a pair where you've obviously got two commodities. Uh, um, you've got the New Zealand, obviously, and the CAD. Now, the CAD is also what is also going to be driving this pair. It's not just what you see the technical setup, but also because it's got the Canadian, you've also got oil to factor in as well. So it carried on higher. Then we had another up candle with a lot of volume going in underneath. But again, that is, you know, if with that amount of volume, you think, okay, there's, it's, it's probably going to go a bit higher. Then you have a sort of similar repeat of the candle here where you have a, a, a um, as another kind of doji candle again with a lot with a reasonable amount of volume underneath it and it's telling you that it's like if there's a lot of pressure apologies about that but we've had someone turn up um an hour well more than an hour earlier than they should have done so what i'm going to do if it's uh, if i hope you don't mind i'm actually going to pause here it's only going to be for about uh, five minutes or so while we ask them to come back later um, and then David can can join me again and we will um, actually continue. And what we'll do with this recording, because it is being recorded, is that we'll splice this, the, the pause out of it. So it'll be it'll be much more seamless and you won't be able to hear uh, this commentary either. Um, let me just I think I'll stop there. And then what I'll do is I'll take it back up again uh, on the uh, New Zealand Canadian but uh, we'll finish on on that note as I said temporarily for um, should not shouldn't be more than about five at least ten minutes so as I said I do apologize if um, if in the meantime if you've got any questions do put them in the uh, the chat box and we will um, you know we'll certainly deal with them uh, when we come back I'll put it in as a note as well because I know we have people joining us at all uh, different times and they'll wonder what the what the heck is going on so thank you so much for your patience Hi everyone, thank you so much for your patience. David's going to be in in a couple of minutes. As I explained in the in in the chat, someone's turned up um, a lot sooner than we expected. In fact, shouldn't have been here for at least another hour or so. So, and uh, as we're um, we're back at our home up in the up in the hills, we're quite remote, and it uh, seems a bit unfair to send them away and say come back later. They've uh, they've actually come. Uh, a fair way way to come over and see us so anyway thank you so much for your patience david is now walking back in the door so that's good timing <laughs> dogs kicking off bones going visitors at the door right brilliant are you all behind you've settled now <laughs> oh, sorry my apologies again right we were looking at the um new zealand canadian this is a candidate. This is a potential pair. I've actually been following it for um, a little while, actually, and I've been waiting uh, to see whether there was a uh, an opportunity to take a short on this pair using, uh, well, both the CSI and the heat map. And you can see why here it's, it's right at the top. This is uh, the heat map of the 28 pairs that, um, uh, that really most, the vast majority of traders uh, trade. I know there's all sorts of exotics. There's thousands of currency pairs that you can trade. But realistically, uh, most of us stick to uh, the, the 28. And we developed this because we wanted to see 
the performance of, of, of uh, the currency pairs, um, not only um, against you know each other, as it were, which was the sort of strongest and which was uh, the, the weakest and which were just in, in the middle, but also across the multiple time frames. And like all indicators, it doesn't matter whether they're proprietary, whether they're uh, uh, standard ones, all they do is they highlight a potential trading opportunity. And with the New Zealand Canadian, I'll just move that over there to the other screen, is the volume profile under this particular pair has really been a uh, classic uh, VPA, particularly over the last few days. And um, the two, this is yesterday's and uh, the day before, and what you can see here, we can still have rising prices, very compressed uh, price action, ton of volume underneath it, clearly anomalous. And then yesterday we had a fall in volume and we had weakness to the top of, of that candle. So an indicator, you you use it in, conduct, in conjunction with a methodology. Here we have volume price analysis with your chart analysis. And as I said, this is this is the daily chart. And if I pull up the daily chart for the CSI, you can actually see here um, what has uh, what you know, kind of attracted me, if you like, to these two currencies. First of all, we have uh, the New Zealand dollar, strong run up. We'd had a pullback, then a further run up, and it looks like it's, you know, it's a candidate for rolling over. And it was then a question of finding, well, against what do I particularly want to trade the New Zealand dollar? And the other one is down here is the Canadian. Now, this has been, um, it's a great example of how uh, a, a currency can look to be turning higher from an extreme, although not as extreme as possibly the euro, but certainly an extreme. And then it just completely reverses, goes back again, then tries to rise, then 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 falls again. And I always knew that was the case, and particularly with the New Zealand dollar, that also explains why it hasn't. Uh, the New Zealand hasn't rolled over uh, yet in in any meaningful way against the uh, Canadian dollar. But I'm in this position against the uh, New Zealand, uh, against the Swiss, we can see here, which is the green one, which is uh, going higher. And I'm actually, and I'm also in the Aussie, because you can see here now, you know, the Aussie has, has turned down quite sharply. I decided, because I looked at the hourly chart, uh, and David's got the hourly chart and he'll talk you through the hourly chart because we're looking at these longer term time frames and you have to find an entry. I know a lot of people talk about using the four hour chart, but the four hour chart, because you've got this, uh, it, um, it, you've got this sort of crossover, or you've got this, um, uh, certainly with the volume profile, you've got to factor in the, the, uh, the participation levels of, of the different time zones. I've actually looked at the step down to the hourly chart and you can see the uh, the very clearly what the entry point was on the Aussie Canadian although it looked very nice at the time this was rising the Aussie was setting off quite strongly but again we've had here because of the BOC coming up and upsetting the apple cart um, it's now uh, turned down again and I'm still waiting for this to turn up and I but I've got OPEC today so OPEC may actually, you know, depending on what they say, that will actually carry, uh, give the Canadian a boost. And I also have the oil chart up. If the oil uh, carries on higher, it's had a little bit of a, a pullback over the last couple of sessions, then that will also give me the confidence that that is going to uh, actually turn up as well. And going back to the heat map, um, this is how I then uh, monitor these, these pairs. With the heat map, you can bookmark these pairs. And what's interesting, what is actually quite um, comforting is if you look at the monthly chart, these have now gone into red, and we say with uh, with um, uh, with moves in in times in time frames, when you get a strong bearish moves or a strong bullish move in a in a slower time frame, that is going to impact what is happening on the the faster. So the fact is, I'm going to be in this will certainly well until the market tells me it's time to get out but I'm actually David's got you're going to look at a potential what a price objective is on these but with the heat map it would be great if I could actually ride those all the way down to the bottom and uh, you know get it down to number 28 whether, whether that happens or not we'll wait and see but they looking they're all looking good at the moment aren't they David
Yeah. Learned it. I'm going to pass over to David uh, because, as I said, you've uh, enough of me for the time being. And are you going to go to the Aussie CAD or have you got something else you're going to do? Um, it's up to you. I don't mind. I've got the, I've got the Aussie Express New Zealand. So okay, I'm fine. Sure. Okay, well, I'll, I'll pass. I'll pass over to David. Just changing screens. Hopefully, uh, you can see my Ninja Trader um, multi time frame screen appear. Just going to switch off for a moment. I'll be right back. Apologies for the break earlier on. That was um, completely unscheduled. So I'm really sorry about that. Just going to switch over to the Aussie CAD. Just bear with me a moment. <clears throat> Just waiting for that to load. I've got all these linked. These are on multiple time frames. There we go. Right, okay. This is the hourly chart for the Aussie CAD, which is, as Anna says, one we're in at the moment. And the reaction we saw yesterday was in this candle here. This was um, middle of the afternoon, Bank of Canada. And the trigger, obviously, as you can see, we saw this price action. But the, the comforting aspect to it, as always, is the when you get the volatility indicator triggered with a move such as this and you're in a position, it's all about anticipation and expectation. And the anticipation was, the expectation is that the price action is likely to move within the spread of that candle. And the reason for that is very simple. It's because these news releases, whatever they may be, whether it's rumor, whether it's fact, doesn't really matter. It's an opportunity for the insiders to move the market rapidly. And what happens when you get a rapid market move is it triggers that emotional response of the fear of missing out, of not missing out on the opportunity that's, uh, that you're witnessing. You're seeing a market that's moving very rapidly and your automatic instinct, your emotional response is, I don't want to miss this move. I want to jump in. And traders all around the universe will jump into a move when it's moving quickly, such as this. And it presents the ideal opportunity for a trap move to then develop, which is why volatility and market maker participation, or indeed they can trigger as a trap move, but certainly from a participation perspective, which is why it is such a powerful indicator, because it's giving you a heads up as to the potential for what is like to happen next. And if you're in a short position, as indeed we were at this particular time, and the market suddenly uh, flicks up very rapidly, your response is obviously natural. What do I do? What's going on? Do I close out? Do I partially close out? And once you see the volatility triggered, and it's triggered in real time, so as the price action reaches the extreme of moving outside the average true range, which is what the indicator is based on, it is purely looking at average true range. If you think in very simple terms, in other words, what is the average price move that this particular pair should move at this particular time of day in general terms? And that's really average true range is, is all about. It's just looking at what is the average range, the average expectation of price action. And when it moves outside of that, these little triangles on Ninja Trader, it's dots on um, MT5, and I think it's triangles on MT4. But once it moves outside that, then these are triggered automatically. So once this price action has moved outside, you know for a fact that we are seeing volatile price action, and therefore the expectation is that at the very least, the market will retrace or possibly pause or maybe even reverse but it's just a signal of that is what you're like to see the other aspect to it of course on this hourly chart is that um, i'm not sure where the volume point of control was at the time it may have been here i can't remember precisely forgive me it may well have been here it may not have been it may have been in a slightly different position but what we're seeing now is the concentration of volume around that region 
The market got to that level but wasn't really keen on moving through that level. The yellow dashed line is the volume point of control itself. In other words, it denotes the heaviest concentration of volume in that area, which you can see clearly here. And in addition to that, and really to add further reinforcement, if you like, to the aspect of whether this market was actually going to reverse strongly against us or whether it was just a reaction on the news and therefore likely to subside, was also denoted with this blue dash line, this very thick blue dash line here, which is a support and resistance level purely based on price. So in other words, in this area, we're looking at two aspects of support and resistance using two different metrics, if you will. The first is very much based on price, which is this blue dashed line, which is running through here. So we know for a fact there's very strong resistance overhead as the price action approaches that. And secondly, the yellow dashed line is giving us a perspective on the associated volume in that region and how dense that is. So from those two perspectives alone, it would be enough to give us comfort, if you will, that prob probable pro on the basis of probability, the pair in this particular time frame was not likely to advance, certainly not quickly at any rate, because first of all, it's got to get through this region of price resistance just above. And secondly, uh, the probability is that as we approach this volume point of control region, we are going to see congestion again because that is causing the market to congest. If you've got a lot of volume in an area, then the probability is that market is going to, at the very least, again, pause at that region. Where you have low volume down here, for example, where we've got light volume, if the pair continues lower, then once it gets down to this sort of level, there's very little in the way of price support, these very thin lines. So we know for a fact that price or price support at these regions is very light. And in addition to that, we've got very little in the way of volume down here to hinder progress. So if the pair does move down lower, then once it gets to these regions, our expectation from a trading perspective is that it will move through there relatively quickly, all things being equal and provided that is supported with volume. And you can see I've got multiple time frames here. It's just a classical way of trading which applies not only to the charts themselves but also to the indicators i've got the five minute i've got the 10 minute here i've got the 15 minute I've got 30 minute 60 minute and right down here onto the daily and all of that just gives us perspective on what it is we are trying to do and again once you start to look at all these different time frames you're constantly looking from a volume perspective vpa perspective at any rate you are looking at anomalies or price agreements in other words is the price action and the volume in agreement or is it in disagreement and if it's in disagreement what is it telling you and again you've got a very simple example here we've got a narrow spread candle but we've got a decent amount of volume now that in itself is not sufficient to take a position in the market but it's giving you an indication that the, the, the effort that is going into to that market moving higher is not delivering in terms of price action because you only need to look at some of these other candles here, for example, this one or this one where you've got a quite a wide spread on the day with some decent volume underneath it. If you look at the equivalent volume here, which is actually higher than on this day, look at the price action the price action is maybe a third of the price action on this day so it's just giving you a comparative view on from a volume price analysis perspective on whether that volume is in agreement with the price action or it's in disagreement now as i say that signal alone is not enough to take a position but it's certainly giving you a heads up that at the very least this market is now looking a little bit weak there's a lot of effort going in and the result is not what you expect. You're not seeing a widespread jump in price, you're seeing a narrow spread, which is telling you the market is resistant. The insiders, the market makers are selling into a market that's tired, if you will. It's run out of, it's a little bit exhausted. It's had a decent run higher. 
and it's now getting to that exhaustion point. And of course, that is all reinforced by looking at uh, obviously the starting point, which is the currency strength indicator, where you're looking at overbought, oversold regions, and whether that currency and related currency pairs in the matrix are perhaps signaling that a reversal is now likely in prospect. And everything fits together into the puzzle. And it's really a question of deciding what you're trying to do in your particular time frame and trading accordingly. Now, since we started, we've had this, uh, we've had some more volatility come in here. Big volatility candle, lots of volume. You can imagine traders jumping into that, going short. What's happened? The market's reversed back inside the spread of the candle. Now, you know, that's on a five minute time frame. Does that bother you as a 60 minute trader? Not particularly. All that's reflected on in terms of the 60 minute is we've just got a long legged doji candle here where all that price action is compressed. So we're seeing a market that is indecisive on the 60 minute for the time being. In terms of the trend monitor, we're still in bearish phase for the moment. And in terms of the daily candle, uh, sorry, the daily chart, the trend monitor hasn't transitioned. You wouldn't expect it to. It's still bearish. This price action at the moment is not enough to even signal a change in mildly bearish sentiment. In other words, what we should expect to see if this does indeed transition to a longer term change in trend from bullish to bearish, then at some point we will start to see maybe a darker blue appear, maybe a darker red. And ultimately, if it is a reversal in trend, then through to the uh, bearish trend developing in due course. Let's just go over to uh, the New Zealand Swiss, which was another one. And I've got all these linked, which is uh, just a, a really nice feature on NinjaTrader. If you have these, you've got uh, you've got instrument link and you've also got interval link. So you can you can link them by time or you can link them by instrument. I've just got them linked by instrument. So you just type in whatever it is, pair or, or, or market that you're trading, and it just changes them all instantly. I'll just flick this up. This is a, a classic that Anna and I look for all the time. It's a classic opportunity developing from congestion phases. And as we make the point in the, we spend a lot of time explaining congestion phases in the Forex education program because they are one of the most important areas of the price chart for many, many different reasons. Lots of traders ignore them. They find them frustrating. They want to be trading a trend all the time. But if you think about it logically, trends develop from congestion phases. Congestion phases are the analogy that I've used many times before, and Anna as well, is, is they are the spawning grounds for trends. So if you're a trend trader, if you're, you're looking for trends all the time, then the obvious place to start looking is in congestion phases because that's where they begin. Markets congest in all different time frames from one minute to one month for many, many different reasons. But once you can be assured of one thing with the congestion phase, because it, a pair or a market cannot stay in congestion forever, even more so in the currency world, where pairs are constantly moving from overbought to oversold and back again. That is the nature of this market. So when you have a congestion, pair, congestion area developing on the chart, then all that's required is, is patience. That's it. Nothing else. Just patience and wait for the trades to come and this is just a great example let say we're in this particular pair at the moment and what we have here is the the congestion phase which is relatively narrow it builds into these channels of price resistance and price support we've got this very very solid level of uh, which was acting as support this again the blue dashed line you can see here this is purely based on price is traditional support and resistance. So we're looking at a market that's congesting. It's building these platforms of uh, support. It's building resistance overhead as well. It did break through there temporarily. Then you're looking at the volume. You're looking at uh, what is going on down here. We saw this candle here, for example. In fact, you've got two here, one after the other. You know, that is a market that's not looking strong. Does it mean that market's going to roll over straight away? It could have done. On this occasion, it's just rolled back down to the support platform again. It's been retested. You get a two-bar reversal. Lots of volume coming in here. 
more weakness, lots of volume coming into that one, but it didn't really go very far. Then you're into the overnight session here. So you have to bear in mind that, uh, you know, we're looking at overnight volumes here, which are naturally lower than during the, the London US markets, Northern Hemisphere timeframes. And you're constantly lo looking through here for the opportunities. And all you're waiting for, as I say, is you're waiting for that signal, that trigger to give you the opportunity to get in. Now, that may be uh, an opportunity that you're prepared to take early. We've talked many, many times, and indeed, again, it's covered with something we cover in detail, the tactical approaches that you can take to market. Are you comfortable being a reversal trader? Is that what you want to trade? Reversal trades come at a price. They come at the price of having to put a deeper stop in the market because you've got to allow for all this congestion phase to develop. For example, you could have decided to get in somewhere over here. You could be waiting, waiting. The market rallies. It could have rallied higher. Who knows at that point? So you have to set a much deeper stop. But the advantage to you, obviously, as a trader, is once this gets underway, then you will have got in early. That's a decision only you can make. Now, you might have been more comfortable waiting and said to yourself, well, actually, do you know what? I'm going to wait for this uh, platform to be breached because then it gives me the comfort of having all this price congestion above me. I've got all this volume congestion above me. I've got lots and lots of protection in place. And I've also got a very simple place to, to, to position my stop loss, which is up here somewhere, well above all this uh, congestion phase. And I've got an absolute ton of stuff above to give me protection if there is a market pullback. Now, on this occasion, we had a very sharp move lower. It broke away very cleanly, very quickly. We had the, the volatility triggered. On this occasion, we only had a, a couple of candles of uh, a reversal before the move developed further. Now, at that point, you may decide to get in there. You may have waited for this. You may think, right, okay, now I want to jump into this. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I've got all this protection above me. I'm quite happy to take that position. We see the little rally. This is overnight. This is on low volume, and so on and so forth down into the next phase. And then you're looking at obviously the the indicators to help you. You'll be looking at the CSI in that particular time frame or across that time horizon. The trend monitor here. You know, there's no flicker in this reversal because you wouldn't expect it. We've had the price waterfall again. We've had this minor rally here. We've got a two bar here. We've got a pivot on the top. You know, we've got some decent volume building here. So if this market is going to rally further, and we've got some decent selling under that last candle here. So if this market is going to, to rally, it's going to have to find some, some decent volume to move back up through all these regions. And the trend monitor has not transitioned at all. We've seen no flicker in, in color that color change there. Obviously, if we go back to the faster time frames, what we're seeing here is, and you know, again, it comes back to what you want to do as a trader. And in a way, what we're seeing here is a microcosm of that price action where we've got the volume point of control. We've got congestion building in this region. We've got lots of volume building around the volume point of control itself. Not a great deal in terms of price support and resistance on the five minute there, but we've got a ceiling building here and we've got a kind of floor building here. Now for this to move through here, we've got some, some pretty solid volume here. So if it's gonna move through there rapidly, it's gonna to have to come down with decent volume. So we wanna see rising volume in a falling market here. We've got some price uh, congestion here, which is potentially gonna cause it to pause as well. But then once we're through there, we're down into these lower volume regions here before we get down into some higher volume down here and also some further price congestion over here. So in terms of looking at that as a trading opportunity, if you were looking at it from the perspective of, you know, do I want to trade this short as an intraday scalping trader? Those are the factors you'd be looking at. And in addition to that, you would then be looking at these various regions as how far do I think this market can deliver. What can this market deliver for me before we run into some other issue that may cause it to pause? So you're putting the whole picture together. If this, uh, if you're looking at it from the volume perspective, then is that sufficient for you in terms of the price spread and the risk on that position? It may be, it may not be. And it's just a question of decision making based on what you see on the chart. We go to the 10 minute. What are we seeing on the 10 minute? 
similar sort of picture. You can see the trend monitor with transition. We've gone from into the darker blue. Now we're moving into the brighter red. We've got the volume point of control. So we're anticipating congestion around this, this phase of price action. It's no great surprise to us. We've got some, some levels of price support potentially below, relatively minor, one here, one here, and one deeper one here. So there's not a huge amount of price a support which is likely to hinder progress. Nevertheless, these will be tested and we want, we need to see that moving through with decent volume. And on we go. We go through the time horizons up onto 15. We've seen no flicker of change on the trend monitor here. But again, we're trading around the, the volume point of control. It's all adding up to that picture of congestion with some bearish sentiment. And on this chart, you can see we've got some very solid resistance overhead here in terms of price less so in terms of volume as we move up the chart and so on and so forth. And that really is how you put it all together. You can see here onto the 30 minute, that's giving us a, a different perspective in terms of time. You can see here the volume going in, that's fine. Price is in agreement, volume is in agreement. Here it's in disagreement. We've had slightly less volume, but definitely less price action. So from a VPA perspective, what you're looking at there is a market that is is finding it really tough going. The effort's going in, but it's not delivering on price. And in a similar way, you can look at this candle here. This is this is uh, anomalous. We've got a lot of volume going in, but the price actions try to rally, fall and back. So we know for a fact there's a decent amount of selling going in on this particular candle. The trend monitor on that occasion has not transitioned. We've got decent volume around here. We've got very light price action in terms of potential support to stop this market falling. So if this uh, if this bearish sentiment continues, then as we move down here, we've got lighter volume in these regions. And once we get down to this level, it's very light indeed and should just go straight through that region in due course. And we've done the 60 and really just the daily chart just gives you the it gives you the perspective on what is going on? And again, as you can see here, we've got this a ton of volume came in here. This is very high volume. You can see it matches this one. You know, this was even more extreme under this candle here. So much, much higher volume here. But weakness in the daily chart because that volume should reflect much wider price action. You can relate it to this one, for example, or uh, this one here, for example, where we had high volume, decent price spread. So we've got rising price and rising volume. And then we get this much higher volume candle here. But the price action is relatively narrow, very narrow indeed. In fact, it's just giving you that heads up. And what's interesting about this is that, and it's something you have to understand about volume price analysis, is it doesn't happen instantly. It's not going to happen within hours or within a day or two. But happen it will. And the way to view these signals is just that. They are early warning signals that the market is now becoming weak. It's no longer strong. There is weakness on the horizon. It does not necessarily mean that the following day this market's just going to do that. As you can see here, we carried on. Then we got the little uh, uh, spinning top or um, tiny little doji candle here with the reversal which duly arrived. And that is it's something you have to bear in mind. It, it's, it's very rare that you see a signal and the market instantly reacts. It just doesn't work that way. And again, that's explained in detail in the Forex program too. Um, but as you can see here, we had this a uh, lot of volume here and we had this weakness here. Market tried to rally, pivot to the upside. We know for a fact that, and in addition to that, we can also see we've got falling volume here. We've got a rising market under falling volume. So you put the, these sorts of signals together you start to look at the currency heat map, you're looking at the currency strength uh, indicator, you're looking at the array in your chosen time frame, and it's putting it all together for you and giving you the confidence to take a position in the market. I'm going to pass back to Anna at that point because I've been going a little while. While David was speaking, I've been looking at um, at, at some other pairs and also um, 
just to make a, a just to highlight a, a comment that uh, David has, has kindly put into the chat box and basically saying uh, in case you can't see it I'm never sure whether you can see each other's uh, comments this is basically the, the the Canadian give a nice play on the fade post the BOC um, uh, announcement and that's what you'll often find after this uh, uh, you know these sharp moves either higher or lower and certainly if you have the uh, something like the volatility indicator that that we've developed you know it's outside of the true range you can sort of say yep that is going to go back into the spread of that candle so if you're a, a short-term scalping trader you're an intraday trader it just gives you an opportunity, but you understand the price action. You understand the role that volatility is playing on the chart. You understand why that volatility has uh, come in, and uh, and also as he says, the you know the CSI gives you these uh, the clues as well. And it's the reason why we've developed these indicators to support um, the, the our VPA uh, methodology, so that we are we try and be ahead of the game all the time you're not as David said as, as most traders are you're simply reacting all the time oh you see something oh I must jump in and uh, and and away you go but the reason I pulled up the uh, the pound yen is because in fact as you can see on the 20 minutes we've had the classic we've had a volatility candle triggered um, on the 20 minute chart you know the pound is going to trigger volatility uh, expected and unexpected given what is going on uh, with uh, Brexit but the reason for um, for mentioning it is is this and I've pulled up all the pound pairs and where they are on the the heat map and we can see here it's actually at spot 18 but what's interesting as I said you've got the um, you've got the slower time frames you can see that the month the the week and the day are very resolutely red now what happens is as an intraday trader you are always going to be looking for opportunities um, most of the time as traders are all going to be trading counter trends somewhere along the line doesn't matter you know nothing these these time frames they don't um, you know they're, they're not always synchronized as it were or either one way uh, or the other unless they are in a very strong trend up or down but what it does is if for example the pound yen is 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 one of your pairs and you are on a on a on a trading it on an intraday basis this applies to whatever pair um the other the other way you use an indicator such as the heat map is you can we can see on the daily chart if i just expand the daily chart um since the break away from the volume point of control at 146.52 it has been in a it's been fairly bearish now i know yesterday we had this uh, you know we had this uh, pullback we had this nice up candle uh, volume wasn't uh, wasn't fantastic underneath it uh, we can see here we have to compare the volume on other candles um in this pair to try and make a judgment of whether that um price action volume a combination is 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 typical for this pair you know is this is or is it maybe an anomalous and in fact there really wasn't enough to justify that kind of move higher and in fact the day actually closed with the uh, with a wick to the top of the candle so you so we knew that uh, you know it possibly wasn't going to go very far and in fact um, overnight it did actually go back down again that's primary a lot of it the markets anything with a yen in it is going to give you an idea of market sentiment and obviously the yen has been bought there's uh, there's issues with um, uh, is it the, the Chinese chip maker David the, yeah. the CFO was arrested in, in Canada at, at the moment markets the insiders market makers take any excuse to rack mark to rack the price about um, you know if there's any fear uh, negative sentiment that is going to be reflected in bonds and in currencies and currency pairs it's going to be with something with the yen so if the yen pairs are uh, are um, um, are falling it means the yen is being bought which means the markets are really not very happy at all so my point is this overnight it fell but look at the wick to the bottom of this candle if I expand it a little bit higher there we are well this little wick to the bottom of the candle now as a day trader as a short-term trader that could possibly offer you an opportunity to 
the long side. Now, yes, you are going to be trading against possibly the overwhelming sentiment um, for this pair, but as a short-term trader, you're not going to be in this very long. And this is where you would use something like a, a, a Renko with obviously a short-term uh, time frame. I've got, I've got the three minutes and I'm benchmarking it against, against the 20 minute. It doesn't, um, you know, it hasn't sort of, it did explode a little bit higher, but because the volatility was triggered, price has gone back into the spread of that candle. And in fact, on the Renko, the reason we developed the Renko is you can almost use this as, as for entries, staying in and, and exiting, but you really want to see um, this turn into a, a bright color. You don't want to see this in between color. That was that nice move uh, uh, lower. And this is typical of what you would be looking for. Once it transitions, we've got congestion, Again, the importance of congestion uh, phases, transitions, and you've got the move higher. And then when do you sort of look to come out? Well, it, you had the transition card, didn't go to bright red. There was another slight move higher, but you'll probably get out here. Once that changes color, that's quite a nice big move for the pound yen. The pound yen, when it moves, it moves very fast. But look through, look at the little pullback here. The trend monitor stayed blue. It was just, um, just a minor pullback and then it carried on higher. That is against the sentiment of the pair that we can see here, where we can see here it's at spot 19, it looks like it's it's falling. You know, where is it going on the heat map? Is it going higher or lower? Well, given that these are these are all red, the, the, the monthly, the weekly, and the daily, you know, the chances are it's going to be lower, but it doesn't mean there isn't an opportunity on the faster time frames. What it also helps you with is giving you, helping you with your risk assessment on the trade itself. This is nothing to do with the, your position sizes. Position sizes are dependent on your, um, on the money you have in your account, uh, what you're comfortable trading, whether you're comfortable trading micro lots. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's a money thing. It's, it's much easier to calculate what is far more difficult to calculate is what is you know what is the risk of that trade is it is it worth actually taking a punt on the trade and having something like a heat map where you can watch the pairs go going up and down and we have the currency array as well there's we've we've got another indicator that we've developed where we try and capture the momentum of the moves and uh, so currency rate. So these indicators, they're not just there to give you highlight, to highlight potential setups, trading opportunities. They're also there to help you once you're in to manage the trade, but also much it is to give you a, some kind of feeling for how much risk, whether going long in a pair like the pound yen, given what is going on with um, uh, with Brexit, given what is going on with market sentiment, you're taking on two factors here. Not only are you have to factor in uh, the, the Brexit saga, because the pound yen also reflects sentiment and risk, i.e. Uh, with, the, with the yen, you are having to look at two lots of risk factors in your risk analysis. Is that, David, anything you want to add to that? No. That's it. That's really what I wanted to say about that. Are there questions there? Someone's, my question things come up. Oh, David has said, you know, fine, the, the FTSE is up, uh, is down uh, 200, uh, uh, 200 points. That's a lot, a lot. Anyway, that's what I want. David has mentioned already that everything we talk about here, um, you will find, as I said earlier, in the books. That could be your introduction to for, um, volume price analysis for the forex market, your introduction to what we call the three-dimensional approach to forex trading, where not only do you take account of the technical analysis, fundamental analysis, but also related markets. And as I said, we've put this little box set together, which is going out at 9.99. These are actually four books for the price of one, obviously the digital uh, version. And a lot of traders just buy the books. They're perfectly happy with that. And I have hundreds and literally hundreds and hundreds of emails, uh, you know, to, uh, telling me that the books have truly revolutionized their trading. Not only has it given them a methodology on which to um, 
add because with VPA you can add all sorts of things to it. We've got proprietary indicators, but you can add Fibonacci to it. You can add Elliott wave. You can add any your chart pattern that you like. Double tops, uh, you know, double bottoms. It's the methodology that you build on, and what you build on is very much up to you. But we also have, as David mentioned, we have a complete forex trading program where. This is us. We're not here today, actually. This is uh, this is our, our other trading center, as it were, um, where essentially we put everything together. It is a very, very comprehensive program, and you can find details at Quantum Trading Education. And what it will do for you, first of all, you have uh, the resources. There are videos. There are download PDFs, but you also get the indicators with it as well you can either have you can either select to have the mt4 mt5 and you or you can have the ninja and david and i are really proud we now our traders are now in the hundreds and i have to say we've not had any refunds at all have we there is a refund option on it not one trader has said this is this is rubbish <laughs> i want my money back and we are really really proud of that as i said the 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 program itself covers everything in immense detail the technical analysis module is based on vpa and it is if you like the theory is richard wyckoff uh the, his three important laws you also have a psychology module because psychology mindset you've got to understand yourself and you've got to this is all the mechanics of it this is the risk the money flows and your trading plan as well and it's yours um and it's very much self-directed you can uh you can take your time i reckon really to become proficient in it you've got to allow yourself six months do you reckon six months yeah so that's three, to three to six months. I mean, if you've got time to devote to it uh, 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 much more then you know, you can, it depends on the time that you have uh, available. And there we are. That's all the details. And the cost of the program, see if I can find it here, which is uh, also very important, is, there we are, it's 13914 MT45 or 1694 for Ninja Trader because there are slightly more indic indicators on the Ninja Trader. But it, it does include the quantum indicators. And if you've bought quantum indicators, either one or the complete package, you will, of course, be given a, um, a credit and you can spread the payments over three months as well. And in addition with the indicators, you do actually, we develop new indicators all the time. They are automatically added to your package. But if you want more information, you can either email me, Anna at AnnaCooling.com or David at QuantumTrading.com. And really, the books and the, uh, and the whole program is really, we want you to succeed. We want you to become confident, uh, competent traders and competency will come with confidence and confidence comes when you really understand what is going on in your chart why it's going on and then obviously having the tools and the tactics to be able to take advantage of what is going on on the charts anything you want to add to that no i think that's it thank you that's as i said we will put a, a recording up uh, we'll slice out the gap in the middle. But thank you so much for being so patient with us today. Uh, we are actually back in the run up to Christmas. As I said, we are actually back at uh, 8.30 um, next Thursday, aren't we? Yeah. Well, actually, we're, we're back on Tuesday with the indices, stocks and commodities um, uh, webinar. That's in the afternoon. So if you want to want to come along to that, you're more than welcome. Have a great trading day. Thank you so much for coming. and. Um, We'll catch you next time. Take care.